Good morning, Kaysun. Welcome to our lesson about quality texts for week three. We're going to look at a new story today. Here's our learning sequence for the week. We're going to be looking at a book called The Runaway Hug by Nick Bland. On Monday, we will identify the different parts of the cover and we will predict what this book might be about. On Tuesday, we will look at the characters in the story. Wednesday is about looking at the setting of the story. On Thursday, we'll find out about the problem and how the problem gets solved. And on Friday, we're going to talk about our favourite part of the story. Remember that every day you'll be asked to draw, talk, share and write. So you will be asked to draw a picture of something that is happening in the story and share it with your parent. Next, you will add some words to your drawing. A reminder for mums and dads, here are some questions that you can use to help your child as they, as they are doing their drawing and as they are sharing their drawing and writing some words. Well, today's Monday, boys and girls. So on Monday, this Monday, we are learning about the information found on the cover of a fiction book. And last week we looked at Rodney Loses It, which was also a fiction book. And we looked at some parts of the cover. So I'm going to see if you can remember some of those parts today. This week's book is called The Runaway Hug. Have a look at the cover and think about what this book might be about. This is called making a prediction. So we make a prediction when we look at the picture. It's only a very small picture on today's book, but it looks like it's showing a little girl wearing her pajamas, and it looks like she's giving that letter a hug. Maybe there's also a clue in the title, the runaway hug. We all know what a hug is, but I wonder why it might be called a runaway hug. What does that mean? Look at the title. The arrow is pointing to the title this time. What do you notice about the title? Can you point to the name of the author and the illustrator? There they are. I've put a yellow circle around the author and the illustrator. It is a little bit tricky to see. It's a little bit blurry, but the author of this book is Nick Bland and the illustrator is Freya Blackwood. When you watch this story on Story on Storybox Library, the lady who is reading the story is the illustrator, Freya Blackwood. So she's reading the story to you, but she also drew the lovely pictures inside. What else can you notice about the cover? Maybe you can tell someone in your family what you notice about the cover. Can you make any connections to this book? The author is Nick Bland. You might remember we read another Nick Bland book late last term when you were learning from home. It was called The Wrong Book. Nick Bland has written many, many children's books, so you might be able to find some other ones on Storybox Library or on YouTube. And when we get back to the school library, you might be able to find some other Nick Bland books there. I think even some of our home reading books are Nick Bland stories and Freya Blackwood illustrates a lot of those stories. Can you make any other connections to the book? I think everybody likes hugs. Maybe you can think of a time when you had a nice hug. Who gave you that hug? What was it for? It looks like the little girl might be wearing pyjamas and sometimes we do get hugs when it's bedtime, don't we? Did you predict that the book might be about a character giving a hug? I wonder why it is called a runaway hug. You'll find out when you read the story today. Today's task is to draw a picture of a time when you felt like you needed a hug. Talk about your drawing with a parent and add some words to your drawing. Remember, after you've done that, you can view the book on Storybox Library. 
I hope you enjoy that story. I'll see you tomorrow. Hi boys and girls, it's Tuesday today and today we are learning about characters. Do you remember last week in the story we read? There was only one character in that story, it was Rodney the rabbit. So we might remember that characters are the people, animals or creatures in fiction stories. Last week it was an animal, Rodney the rabbit. This week you would have seen that most of the characters in the story are people. There was one animal, wasn't there? Can you remember what a fiction story is? That's right, a fiction story is a made up story. It is not true. Now I'm sure you noticed in this story that there were lots of people in the family. People are real, aren't they? We know that people are real, you are real. So even though the people are real in this story, it's still a made up story because the people are not real in this story. Freya Blackwood drew, drew the pictures and Nick Bland wrote a story about a family and we know that families are real. But this story is still a fiction story because Nick Bland used his imagination and he made up the story. Here are the characters in the book. The first characters we see were Mummy and Lucy. That's where Lucy was asking Mummy for a hug and Mummy was busy doing the washing. The next character we saw was Daddy. What was Daddy doing when Lucy wanted a hug? After Lucy walked away, it looked like Daddy was cheering for something. I wonder what he was cheering about. The next character, the next two characters are the twins. We don't learn their names in the book. They're just called the twins or the boys. Do you know what a twin is? We have talked about that before. Twins are babies that were born on the same day. So Lucy's mummy had two babies on that day and they were the boys or the twins, but we don't know what their names are. The twins didn't really want to give Lucy a hug at first, but they did because they're her brothers. Sometimes it's nice to get hugs from your brothers. The next character was Lily. Lily looks like she might be the baby sister. It looks like she might have been getting up to a bit of mischief in the kitchen, eating some peanut butter. Lily gave nice hugs to Lucy, didn't she? But it was called a peanut butter hug. I wonder why it was called that. The next character was a naughty character in the book, but it wasn't a person, it was Annie the dog. What was Annie doing in the bathroom that was so naughty? I wonder if that part of the story made you laugh a little bit. So those are all of the characters in the story. How many characters did you see in this story today? That's right, there were seven characters in the story. Six people and one dog. Well done. Today's task is to draw a picture of one of the characters from the story. This time there are lots to choose from. Just choose one. You can choose all of them if you like, but choose one character to draw a picture of and share it with a family member. Can you tell your family member something about the character. You might think about what they look like, what colour their hair is, what clothes they are wearing. What are they doing in the picture? Is there something funny or interesting about your character? Don't forget to add some words to your drawing and share that with a parent. I'll see you tomorrow for some more learning. Okay, son, it's Wednesday today, and on Wednesdays we look at the settings in our fiction stories. Fiction stories can be set in many different places. Last week we found out that stories can happen in any place at all, maybe on the moon, in the jungle, in a school, or in a city. Last week's story about Rodney was set just in Rodney's house. I wonder where today's story is set. Let's have a look at the setting in the story. Here are some pictures just to remind you. I think this is quite an easy one too. It looks like it's another house. It's not Rodney's house, but it's the house belonging to this family. 
I really liked the pictures in this story. I liked how Freya Blackwood drew all the different rooms of the house. And you can probably see in that house that there are many things that you also have in your house. You probably have a washing machine and pictures on the wall and some toys lying about the place. I'm sure you have a TV and a couch. I'm sure you have a kitchen, but I don't know if you have a baby sister who's opening all the cupboards. I'm sure you also have a bathroom. And there's lots of other things in the story. There's even some stairs. Do you have stairs in your house? I don't have any stairs in my house, but this story looked like it had a lot of stairs to go up and down. Some parts of the house looked a little bit messy. I think it's a very busy house. Lots of children playing and mum's doing lots of washing there. Dad's just watching TV. I wonder if he's helping out. So the setting in this story is a house. It could be a bit like your house. Today's task is to draw a picture of the setting in the story. You might like to look through the story again and choose the, the setting that you like the best. Did you like the laundry? Did you like the bathroom? Did you like the living room or the TV room? Maybe you liked the kitchen. Share your drawing with a family member and add some words to your drawing to share as well. I'll look forward to seeing those on Dojo. See you tomorrow. Good morning everybody. Today's Thursday and we are learning about the problems in fiction stories. Most fiction books have problems and the problems usually get solved or fixed. You might remember in Rodney Loses It, the problem was that Rodney lost his pen. But the problem got fixed because Rodney found his pen. Sometimes at the end of a story you might notice the author says something like, they all lived happily ever after. That's a way of telling us that the characters are happy again and we can call that a happy ending because the problem got solved. What is the problem in this story? I've put a picture there and I really like this picture because in the story it shows Lucy chasing after Annie as Annie runs through the house up the stairs and into a room and out of another room and there's Lucy running up and then we see her down the bottom again so it looks like there's more than one Lucy and more than one Annie but that's a nice way that Freya Blackwood showed us what is happening in the book by drawing a big picture of what was happening all over the house and we can see lots of interesting things going on there. So that's a little clue when we look at this picture. What was that problem? Did you say the problem was that Annie ran away with the hug? That's why it's called the runaway hug, isn't it? Because Annie took the hug and she ran away with it. Lucy had to chase Annie to try to get that hug back. How does the problem get solved? Did Annie get the hug back? Today you're going to draw about the problem in this story and you can have a think about how the problem got solved. Talk about this problem and add some words to your picture. Hi boys and girls, it's Friday, the last day of the learning week and on Fridays we learn to respond to fiction stories. We're going to think about the parts of the book that you might like. I've put some pictures on here of some of the parts of the story that I really liked. And we'll have a think about the reasons that people like different parts of different books. So again, I've got the picture there at the top of Annie running away with the hug and it shows Annie going up and down the stairs and in and out of the rooms while Lucy tries to get that hug. I really liked the interesting picture. Sometimes people like books because of the pictures. We like them because of the story too, but pictures give us even more things that we can look at. So one of the reasons I liked this book was I liked what, looking at all of the parts of the house in this story as Annie ran around and around. 
And you can see some messy things in that picture too. Lots of toys have been left out. I think there's even some toilet paper going down the stairs there. So was there an interesting picture that you liked in the story? Maybe that's part of the reason you liked this book. Sometimes we like books because they have funny parts in them. I thought it was funny when Lucy was trying to get the hug back and Annie just came out of nowhere and jumped on top of Lucy to give her a hug. I also thought it was a bit funny when Annie was in the bathroom playing with the toilet paper. Did you notice earlier in the book there was a picture of the toilet with lots of messy toilet paper? Did you know who did that? There wasn't any clue at first, but later on we found out that it was Annie who did that. That's why in the story Nick Bland called Annie naughty. She was being a naughty dog messing up the bathroom. If we look at the picture below, we can see the picture where Annie's mummy is saying goodnight to her and giving her a hug and a kiss. And she even says she's not going to run out of kisses. She's got lots of those. Maybe you liked the story because it reminded you of when you hug your mum or dad goodnight. Maybe it reminded you of getting special hugs. Or maybe it reminded you of feeling all snug and warm in your bed at the end of the day. Especially when you've been working so hard and doing all your work, you need to have a big rest. So maybe you made a connection with this book when you were thinking about bedtime. I've also got some interesting language on this page. Sometimes we really like stories because of the interesting language that they use. There were words in this book like slobbery, grumbled, sleepier and peanut buttery. Those are very interesting words. Do you know what they mean? Do you think you could pause the video here and tell someone in your family what some of these words mean? I'll come back in a moment and we'll have a, t a talk about them. Slobbery. I think it was Annie giving a slobbery kiss to Lucy. Slobbery is when you get a kiss maybe from a dog and they lick you and there's lots of slobber. That means there's lots of saliva coming out of their mouth. It's a bit yuck, isn't it? Grumbled. Grumbled is a little bit like saying something in an angry voice. I think it might have been the twins that were grumbling because they didn't really want to give Lucy a hug at first. Sleepier. I really liked the way in the story that Lucy described the hugs in different ways. She said mummy's hug was long and soft. Daddy's hug was twice as big. Lily's hug had smelt a bit like peanut butter. Annie's hug was slobbery. And the very last hug of the day felt sleepier than before. Because Annie was, uh, sorry, Lucy was so tired by then that the hug felt really sleepy. And the last word I've got there is peanut buttery. After Lucy had the hug from, um, from Lily and Lily was eating peanut butter, then the hug that she gave to Annie the dog was a bit peanut buttery. That means it smelt and tasted a bit like peanut butter. So have a think about those pictures and some of the other pictures in the book. Think about what part you really liked. Draw a picture of your favourite part in the story. Share it with a family member and tell them why you liked that part. Add some words to your drawing and remember, post it up on Dojo so Mrs Seymour and Mrs Antala can see your fabulous work this week. I really hope you enjoyed The Runaway Hug. I really like that story. It made me feel all happy and warm inside when Lucy got her hug back. And I really liked watching what Annie the dog was doing throughout the book. Funny Annie. I wonder if Ned the dog does any funny things like that at Mrs. Antala's house. Well, I look forward to sharing another story with you next week, boys and girls. Bye for now.